I'm sorry. So why am I sorry? Because I missed question and answer last week. I'm sorry guys, I really am sorry. I just had a hectic week. I tried my best to get to it. I just did, I didn't make it. I just couldn't get it done. I couldn't get it done. I started getting some clips done and I, I just couldn't get it done. So this week, we're back at it. First for some housekeeping items. It is very hot here in Pennsylvania. Now very hot to me is like 70 degrees. I'm sweating, I am wet. It's not comfortable. I'm just not happy about the whole situation and the summer's really not even here yet. I know some people just, just live for it. I live for like fall, real early spring and then I'm done. Just count me out for the rest of the year. So that's my rant for today. Additional housekeeping items are because we missed last week, let's do two giveaways. I'll do it throughout the episode, so you're gonna have to watch, maybe you'll win something. Some exclusions do apply, like my instructors that know the answers to the questions, you are not allowed to participate. Sorry guys. Also the basic bushcraft class that just came through this past week, congratulations, you did one knock-up job. And last housekeeping item, if anybody has any experience in painting boats, let me know. Can I just spray paint the boat with normal spray paint, like the outside? That's what I want to do. Mike Gasper, one of my instructors, told me what he would do, but it seems like a lot of work, Mike. Sorry. I just want to spray paint the boat. Will it work? I don't know. We'll ask everybody on here. Now legit on to some questions. Here's what I'm going to say, though. So I got these questions last Monday evening. Monday evening? No. I'm sorry, Tuesday morning, I printed these out, hoping to get the video done, I didn't, I never went back on. So these are the questions that are gonna get answered. Would it be better to show up at your place unannounced with a case of beer or bacon? I would say just drop the beer and the bacon off, don't show up unannounced. I can't decide whether your guest Dan should be a paid double for his appearance and comments or paid nothing and banned for life. I should get paid for having him on there, having to deal with him. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dan. No, he's great. He's like a natural. And I don't even think he's really trying to act. It just comes out with him. If you spend any time with him, life's a sitcom. I can't breathe. Doesn't even have to try. It's great. When you get your knife line up and running, would you consider including a line of knife blanks? Possibly down the road, I already thought about that. I have some other ideas, not just blanks. Um, I don't wanna give you too much away. The knife line is coming along. We're backed up a little bit because of one or two little processes with the handles, but we're, we're on track with everything. So it's coming soon, just, just hold on with it. But blanks, they will probably be down the road. Will we have some sweet custom patches for our motorcycle gang? So here's my idea. Now it has nothing to do with the patches for the motorcycle gang. I feel like if four times a year, so every three months, we do one t-shirt, like something that has to do with like the motorcycle gang or a picture of my buddy Dan with unbelievable written under it. What do you guys think about it? I just, I need people to buy into it though so we can actually sell. I'm not looking to make money on that, but we'd have to go through my site. We'd have like a pre-order get them made, send them out. I love the idea. I think definitely we would have some killer shirts and it would be a great idea. Like a shirt kind of club, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Let me know what you guys think. Where do you store your trap, lure, and bait after trapping season? In the trapping house, which I am gonna do a video on. Again, promise that. Very soon we'll do a video on that. Um, I have an old refrigerator. I keep it in there with beer. That's really where I keep it before that. I tried to keep it in a cool, dry place. So I usually would put it in a bucket with a sealed lid down the basement because it was cool and like a constant temperature. You don't want that stuff to get extremely hot because it, it can go rancid. You want to keep that smell as pure as possible. My question is, will you be attending Blade Show in June? Fortunately, this year I will not be making it to Blade Show. I have some other things going on. I will be at Outdoor Retailer, which probably none of you will be at because it's a vendor type show. So sorry about that. If you're going to Blade Show, you're gonna miss me this year. And I'm a little bit sad about it too. I had a great time last year. What type of spices do you take with your gear? Now I used to carry all different spices with me and that got downsized and upsized and downsized. Then it was like Old Bay. Now I have something new. The Finishing Touch by Lex Taylor. New favorite spice. One of my buddies, he's from New York. He makes this spice. It's awesome. It's awesome on eggs, it's awesome on steak, it's just awesome on everything. I use it all the time. I'm actually gonna be carrying it on my site, 
Lex and I just haven't worked all that out yet. He said, yeah, he's gonna do it. I said, yeah, I'm putting it on there. I think we've just been both busy with other projects. Lex, if you're watching this, we gotta get working on it. We gotta get it up on my site. I think we're gonna sell a lot of it. Truckloads. Is it true that only communists put ketchup on hot dogs? Yeah. If you were gonna eat this, what would you put on it? Ketchup. You're a communist! <laughs> what camp activity do you enjoy most besides eating and cooking? <laughs> they are definitely my most favorite camp activities. I love big crafting projects. So I love putting together like big shelters to take a lot of time. I love traditional type woodworking skills, like frontier woodworking skills. So making saw bucks, <clears throat> bugs are in my face. Saw bucks and cobbling benches and carving benches, all that kind of stuff. That's my favorite kind of project to do while I'm out here. But I do like to cook and I do love to eat. And bush drink, how can you leave bush drink out? You people know nothing about me. Hey Dan, your class seems intense. I-N-T-E-N-T-S, like in a tent. Intense. <laughs> Oh, I just, I don't know. I had to say that one, I thought it was funny. How about a video on curing meat in the field? I do have a video on smoked meat in the field. It's actually pretty good. I went back and watched it. I did record that a while ago, so quality is not what it is now. So I should probably redo that during the summer. This would be a perfect time. Maybe we'll do fish this time. Since everybody made fun of my little sunfish that I was catching out of my pond, listen, 20 of those in a survival scenario, finger licking good. Yeah, of course it'd be great to catch some big monster. That's bait my area. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right, I'll eat good. I have my own Soviet Trapper's ax on the way from Poland. Yeah! Yeah, I want you to message me a picture of it. I want to see if it's the small one, same as mine. The question was, do you have any sharpening tips? Um, what I would say is whatever the bevel's on there, like whatever grind's on there, just stick with that, sharpen it up and see how it works. I wouldn't go doing anything drastic. Just keep it sharp like a razor and you should be good. Mine literally is like shaving hair sharp, beyond crazy sharp, and I've never had issues with it, with the edge. And I mean, I, I chop and use that thing all the time. Awesome job on getting that ax. What's your favorite pair of bush pants? Schmidt pants from Tractor Supply by far my favorite. Now in the winter I'll wear some Filson double tin, but they're super heavy, really heavy duty, and hot. But what I wear the majority of the time, and my wife wants to kill me because this is all I really wear other than one pair of jeans I think I own, is the Schmidt pants from Tractor Supply. I think they're even better than Carhartt. Normally they're on sale for like, I know I'm gonna get this wrong, 22 maybe, 22.99. Um, and they last usually a half a year. And that's wearing them almost every other day. I mean, I have my closets loaded with them. Give them a shot. They're cheaper than Carhartts. I think they're more comfortable and they just fit me better. I have big hips and thick thighs. I don't know what to say. I mean, pure muscle, pure muscle. You should go plug yourself more often. Do I take that as a compliment or like, are you like, I should plug my mouth shut? People at camp would say I should plug my ass because I'm farting all the time. Do people in Pennsylvania have to pay to use campgrounds? As far as I know, yes. So if you go to state parks, like the local state parks, Locust Lake, Tuscarora State Park near me, you have to pay a campground fee every night. I don't know about any like the state forests and stuff. As far as, I don't even, I don't know. That stuff I don't know, but it's not like somewhere in Ohio. I went in Ohio last year. Beautiful campground set up the same as our state parks. You just pull in and camp. You, you don't do that in Pennsylvania. You gotta pay. All right, this is just for comedy value. Real men don't need medical kits. We just bleed and die. Yeah, I like it. See, that would be one of them t-shirts. Like, just somebody laying bloody, real, then with that on it, okay? That's what I think. Will you flex for us? Maybe a couple proper poses, bro. Oil it up. Come on. Okay, Dan, welcome. I'm gonna show my inexperience here, and I need you to tell me why I would need a map and compass to get off the mountain. 
Now before we go into that, so here's what I could say. I haven't been on a lot of big high mountains. But what I can say is talk to individuals who do a lot of hiking to more summit type locations where they get way above the tree line. If you come out a certain area, I mean you need to think of massive mountains. If you come out a certain area and you're winding around that mountain or something like that and you're going to use a map and get back down to a certain location, you can't just go off anywhere because you could be way, way out of the way, especially in an emergency. You want to, where you leave the tree line, come back in the tree line. If I'm super inaccurate about that, then I apologize with it because I don't hike big mountains. I'm like an Eastern Wilderness guy. I can just see the top of the mountain and go, but these real big mountains out west, that's what people have told me that is very important. So that's why I relayed that. Now, on to this very important discussion because this literally took up an hour of my life. Thank you very much for not letting me get that hour ever back. Everybody says I say compass wrong. So comp, C-O-M, not comp. C-U-M. Now, I looked that up online. The problem with online is this. If you don't know who the source is that's giving this information, it could be your moronic friend down the street who's just making stuff up and adding it online. I know people like that. So, the way I always pronounce compass is a regional thing. Everybody I asked in my area, I said, hey, how do you pronounce this word? I would spell it for them and they'd say compass. Now, we do drag out the vowels, so Com I know I drag out the O, but competition. It's not competition, competition, okay? Now I know if you look it up, they're gonna say it's pronounced compass, not compass. I'm gonna stay with compass. I like how that sounds. I think grammatically that's correct. If there is an English teacher out there or a speech therapist, I guess you would call it, there's specific language rules that would make a vowel sound differently. It's like a way in an exception. Like it's an exception to the rule of this follows this or that. So there might be a specific rule. If there is, you can cite it, but it needs to be cited through some type of like research-based paper. You could do that. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep saying compass. For all you guys to say compass, C-U-M-P-A-S-S, -S, you an ass. I'm just kidding, I think it's just regional dialect where you come from. It's like tomato, tomato kind of thing. I don't know, that's what I think, that's, well, that's the conclusion I came up, so. That's how it's gonna be. Hey Dan, do you fly fish? How about going into learning some basics? I do fly fish, I can't say I'm a fly fisherman. I'm a guy that has a fly fishing rod. If you wanna know my take on the basics, the more you can learn the hatch and the bugs on the water and match your fly to the bug, I, don't, I think the rest just sort of plays itself out. That's really what separates, in my mind, real good fly fisherman is somebody who just can cast good. What moisturizer do you use? Jergens, natural glow. No, I don't use this. This was at my house. I don't use moisturizer. Are you serious? I know I look golden and I don't use moisturizer, but I would use that. I guess that tans you a little bit. I get on the inside of my arms because outside of my arms are starting to already get a tan from being out every day. Yeah. What's your favorite t-shirt? This one. I think everybody has one of those t-shirts that they like love just old. There's no reason you love it. I like the material. It is actually a jerseys. Um, heavyweight blend. So it came from my buddy's old shop, Custom Tattoo and Oddity Emporium. Black, you can see it's really well worn. I don't know, it's my favorite shirt. I had it now for 12 years. That shirt's 12 years old and still going strong. It'll probably blow out because I just said that. But that's my favorite t-shirt. Can I have your yurt please? No, that's my favorite shelter. I just talked to everybody at the bushcraft class this weekend about that, by far my favorite shelter. I love that thing. If it ever gets destroyed or falls apart, I'm buying another one, immediately. Boom, that quick on the credit card. Burn that baby up. When are you gonna be able to tell us that Dan Wolwak was part of season five of Alone? I was not. They asked me, I said I wasn't sure if I would do it, but keep me in mind, that kind of thing. And I don't think I'll ever go back on any kind of game show, contestant kind of show. I don't want, I don't want to do it. Sorry guys. My brother-in-law, Conrad Kaler. When are we gonna do another frog gigging contest video? Valinsky and I got screwed on the last one. You guys cheated on the last one, and you said that if anybody rats on you, you guys are gonna bury them in the hills. If anybody breaks the circle of trust, <laughs> Guys, if you haven't watched the frog gigging video, go in the search function on my channel, type in frog gig. A couple videos will come up, click the one with Tina on the front. With her frog gig, I think that's what she looks like on the front picture. Click that, it's a great video. That was one of the first, like when I started getting into editing and enjoying myself out here with video. Now it's time for a giveaway. 
This giveaway is going to be for, I don't know, water bottle mate, we'll figure it out. You're gonna get something in the mail. Instructors, you're not allowed to answer this. If anybody knows the name of my first bushcraft camp, it was Camp Blank. If you know that, leave in the comments below. If you don't know it, don't guess because it's just wasting space and you'll win stuff. Okay, that's the first one. Bobby Slack says, why don't you answer Bobby Slack's question regarding Dan's vi van in question and answer number 10. Bobby Slack asked about the Marine Corps sticker in the back window and asked if Dan is a Marine. Don't be a D-bag and answer the question. Now see, you gotta take it to that next level. Are you, you gotta be kidding me. Now number one that came on the van, I was not in the armed forces. Did that answer your question, D-bag? I like that you use Bobby Slack that many times. Along the lines of cooking with Cold Cracker Cookbook, have you ever done any cured or cold smoked meats that can be taken on an extended camp without a cooler and eaten, like jerky to be used in meals like soup and or rice? Yeah, I carry jerky almost all the time, and if I don't have it, which I, all right, here's what I'm gonna say. I should probably retract that statement because my instructors right now are just having the reason that they're doing that is because they always have jerky, so I feel there's no need for me to have jerky, I just eat their jerky. But jerky's a huge staple, I would say, at the Appalachian Bushman School in all of our kits. How about cooking some frog legs? Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it within the next week. Now time for the new segment. If you wanna send me things, by all means I'll accept them. Send them to, all kidding aside, you don't have to send me free stuff, but some people do send me stuff, so I started putting it off to the side in today's package. So do you know what this is? Mead. I'm trying it right now. Look at that, is it smoking? Mm. Oh, is that good? That is delicious. That's gonna be a Memorial Day camp out treat. Thank you for sending me this mead. Bush drinking is in session. What are your thoughts on twig stoves? My buddy Jim Shields came up to my property. We played around with a solo stove feeding the twigs in. It just didn't seem like, I don't know. I'm just not into it. I don't think it's a, a viable piece of kit for what we do. I get the whole concept of it. If you're in areas that maybe you can't have open fires and you're gonna use that, that would be fine. Me personally, I think just an alcohol stove is gonna work just as interchangeable, just grab an alcohol stove. So I give it out a thumbs down on them. I just never bought in. Maybe if somebody out there says, hey, this is the best one you can ever use, and you know I'm gonna love it, leave in the comments below, or send me one. Do the same two people hate your videos every time? <laughs> yeah, it's the same two people, and I'm gonna tell you what. There are times I'll post a video, and there's no way they even watch the whole video, thumbs down. They're just waiting. I love the fact, though, they obviously subscribe because they get the notification, and then they're gonna get on there, give me another view, and whack the, the they don't like button. Like, come on guys, really? That's the level of maturity you're at? They're never gonna see this video because they just hit on like and go on with their day. They're, they're tremendously hurting me. Could you do a video about making and using a cook kit from tin cans? Yep, I had that written down on my list. So uh, we're gonna do that. People will flip out because they're old gas cans and they'll, they'll have a stroke that I'm gonna die because of the gas chemicals or something. I don't really care. I don't care. Are you the only one in your household with mad skills or does your wife also have mad skills? Yeah, I got skills. Hey Dan, in question and answer, you mentioned how you made an inexpensive large wool blanket out of a couple of cheap Harbor Freight wool blankets. Could you go into a little more detail, please? Yes, I will. I get questions on that all the time. That's a great video topic. I'll sketch out sizes, how it's actually sewn, and then you guys can also have a 90 by 90 or 100 by 100. I don't remember exactly what size mine is. Square blanket, way to go. Those Harbor Freight blankets, the newer ones seem a little bit different, but I think that they're still good. I use that blanket all through the summer. I love it. Many thanks for answering my question about the flashlight, medikit, and medikit? and water purification. I really do appreciate that and it does leave me another question. Now why do you get two, two answered questions? You're gonna get two answers. All right, so this question I've read about seven times and it's long, 
it's drawn out. Not that it's a bad question, I'm gonna answer it. So I'm gonna try to jump ahead. It starts with the expression, the less you take, the more you know, but what about the saying that the more you take, the better off you will be and the more prepared you are? I'm asking your thoughts on this topic. So I think that there's a balance there. I, I don't think personally that walking into the woods with just a knife and saying you have all this knowledge is the most ideal situation. You're asking for disaster in that case because no matter how good you are, there comes a time of and point of diminishing returns that torrential downpour or snowstorm, are you gonna get a friction fire as quick as you need it compared to a fire start in a ferro rod? I don't think anybody can argue that point. Now you might be very good at friction fire, but you're not gonna be as efficient as just lighting a lighter. Like it just, it doesn't make sense. So I would say carry gear that's multi-purpose, carry gear that you can use quickly and efficiently and it'll just get the job done. And the things that don't matter, the comfort type items, then get rid of that stuff and learn to use it and use the resources around you. And then all those items that are like emergency items, lighters and ferro rods, learn how to recreate that stuff off the landscape to understand your items better. But I think that there's a happy meeting there. You have to carry some gear and then the luxury type stuff, gone. What knife do you use for cleaning and filleting fish? A knife that I designed, so it's a little bit rusty right now, but I've been using it to skin animals. This is like my number one skinning knife. It fillets fish real well and it's a great design. So this has my car to handles on it. Uh, I had these for sale a while ago. We're gonna be reproducing these, so they will be on sale on my site as soon as our knife line is launched. You should probably pick yourself up one. This, the butcher style knife we have, and our utility knife, that's the trio. That's where it's at. If you can name how many shelters I have on my property. Now, I don't mean like debris shelters that students built, but sustainable shelters that we actually use for demonstrations and different purposes. Free t-shirt. Hit it below the number. Hey Dan, ever just throw your steaks right onto the coals? Put a little bit of olive oil and Chicago seasoning? Or in my case, I would put on Lex Taylor seasoning. Finishing touch. <clears throat> I have cooked steak on the coals before. I mean, it's a fine option. I would rather cook them up off the coals, but I mean, it's fine. You could get, you can get it done that way. How much land do you have? You recommend any good spots in PA that doesn't have a ton of people around? Uh, I don't know about not going anywhere with a ton of people. If you go out in the game lands in the winter and it's not hunting season, sorry about these bugs. That's why I keep doing this. They're just chewing me alive. I'm sick of the summer already. So in the off seasons, if you go to like state parks and stuff, there's usually not too many people around. I don't have any little honey holes that I could tell you about like in the state in general that you can just go and wander off. I know out towards Pittsburgh, there's a lot of like state forest land that is just like wide open country. You probably get away from people there, but uh, that's about it. Land here, we have 55 acres of school property and then I have access to about another 9,000. So it's pretty sweet. I have a lot of woods to operate in. Are you gonna have your new little sidekick on more videos? He seems like a train wreck, but isn't that entertaining? <laughs> People, how his window works. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is sometimes a train wreck. Great guy though, we all love him. And um, he will be in more videos. He's actually in this video. Does your wife have a younger sister? If so, is she available? I'm a real catch, at least that's what my mom tells me. Uh, <laughs> Tara, they're hitting on you. They're hitting on you, Tara. And I think that's gonna wrap it up for question and answer. It's so good to be back. I only missed one week and I feel like it was like the collapse of Rome. That's how I feel. But listen, we'll keep after it now. We're gonna keep on top of it. Flexing, joking, bush drinking, we'll get all of it done. So this was Dan Wolbach with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Hope you enjoyed this video. Congratulations to the two winners. I'll be private messaging you if you get the answers right. Everybody else, beat it till next week. Leave a comment or question for next week. See ya.